Welcome to an Art Spotlight on WRR Classical 101. You're hearing music performed by pianist Seth Knopp. He's a musician who's passionate about bringing new music and new expressions to the listening public. In addition to his many projects, Seth Knopp is artistic director of the Yellow Barn Music School and Festival in Vermont. And in Dallas, he provides artistic direction of the Nasher Sculpture Center's critically acclaimed series, Soundings, New Music at the Nasher. The new season starts in November. My name is Kevin Pitcher. To find out more about what's ahead, I'm chatting today with Seth, who joins me from his home in Baltimore. Hello, Seth. Hello, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Great to talk to you today. I do want to talk to you about the upcoming season of Soundings, New Music at the Nasher, a terrific roster of programs, as always, Thank and you. we'll sample some performances from previous seasons, too. Tell me first about Yellow Barn and how you became associated with the Nasher, please. Uh, well, it, it has been a, a wonderful, now going on five years, uh, collaborating with Nasher Sculpture Center. I actually had an, uh, a relationship with the museum very briefly a number of years ago before I uh, assumed uh, the responsibility for putting the sounding series together. Uh, I am a member of the Peabody Trio, and the Nasher had us come and play a concert uh, down in Nasher Hall uh, years ago. And uh, uh, one thing led to another. I was introduced uh, to Jeremy Strick, the, the director of the Nasher, um, by a mutual friend uh, of ours. And um, we have had a wonderful time collaborating ever since. How exciting is the music that's upcoming for this season? And three of the concerts have to do with Yellow Barn. What is Yellow Barn specifically? <laughs> uh, uh, Yellow Barn is a, a haven for musicians uh, every summer and a series of artist residencies during the year that was begun in 1969 in Putney, Vermont, uh, and uh actually served as the very first place for performing musicians to come. We began these residencies uh, in earnest about five years ago with a full slate of artists coming during the year uh, with projects of their, their own choosing and sometimes of my devising. And many of those, uh, many of those residencies uh, blossom into performances that I bring out to Dallas and share with the audiences uh, uh, that we have at the Nasher for the Sounding Series. Uh, and one of those past performances had to do not necessarily with instruments. It is considered a musical instrument, although not one that you would tune. It's something that helps you keep time as you do your practicing. Metronomes, music by Dirt Ligeti. Tell me about that, please. This is a, a piece that uh, Ligeti, one of the great, great composers of the, the 20th and early 21st century wrote uh, a little bit in reaction to uh, other musical movements. Um, he, uh, he wrote this piece for a hundred wind-up metronomes uh, to be all wound up at a specific, a specific tempo, as you said. Uh, Kevin, this is something that, that we all grow up using, uh, but not uh, always with quite as fun an intention as as it ends up being for the audience.
That's music by Georgie Lickety. The work for 100 wind-up metronomes that my guest today, Seth Knopp, has brought to Dallas with the Nasher Sculpture Center series, Soundings. And Seth is my guest today on this Art Spotlight. Seth, tell me about the next work that we're going to hear, Intimate Letters by Janacek. Yeah, well, Intimate Letters actually is the the um, subtitle for for one of Janacek's two great string quartets. Um, and the other is called the Kreutzer Sonata. Both of them uh, have, a, in a sense, a kind of heavy autobiographical bent to them. Uh, Intimate Letters uh, was certainly on this program that we presented uh, a few years ago at the Nasher. Um, and it has a double meaning, uh, in a sense, uh, as it relates to the program. One is, of course, to Janacek's quartet, but the other is to uh, the work of four slam poets that we brought um, to work with our musicians uh, and inter- intertwine, weave uh, their slam poetry among the, the music that we heard that evening at the Nasher. Um, and uh, what you'll hear is one of those slam poets from Stockton, California. He's now living in Oakland a few years later, Mike Gallagher. Uh, you'll hear a, a poem that he wrote inspired by uh, one of uh, Georgi Kortag's microludes, a uh, piece for string quartet. And you'll hear the very first one, it's quite brief, played by the Parker String Quartet. Here it is now. The strain of singing something lost was a canvas painted. A schizophrenic rush, fountain blossom of colors, musical tombstone chapter books, stories of longed for love and premature loss. The ripe children replucked fruit. Each sweet soul sings a microlude, each pattern bears a name. Tombstone love letters licked shut by silent urges. One heart palpitation downbeat for each word. Their howl is heard in crumbling brick pools, the drool of blessings. Like the flight of the red sphinx hovers inches above erosion. Ra, El, or Is kings shake ten armies, five for each hand. A phantom conductor lifting spirits to decrescendos. The phonetics of Phoenicians trickling down mouth waterfalls. The voices of dead children shudder the insides of buildings. Drowning sorry sorrows with kings in their strung dissonance. A kink in the lips resonating a bow gleaming honey rosin sliding horsehair longings. The machine flows utter madness through auditory cityscapes. Pizzicato splashed against the deep hum of dark cello subways. Shadowed symphonic movements in such a storm the children were let out and buildings drenched in the eyes of hurricanes for hire. A refurbished death perspires oil wet where Moloch sweats. All across the scaled matrices of sound the wood wept and the resolution shines after spastic fraction gathering, blending rhythms while rising in a theme of nervous handshakes. There's a circle of fits in every broken poem, a vocal cord vibrato soothing with mellow tremolo. It cuts the distortion of eulogies, fights for the fusion of voice and fingers, offers octaves to God altars, all singing pieces of Earth's melody. Colang no tongues hit the back of bows with the audacity of arrows, a glistening glissando guiding graphite back to that painful moon howl we all bury deep in time's graveyard. Hoping our progression sounds full to a diatonic society. Hoping our synesthesia reigns cool on dry brains. Tonight, the madness is horrid and beautiful. We play our instrumental souls with our tongues.
This is an art spotlight on soundings, new music at the Nasher. My name is Kevin Pitcher. The new season starts on November 12th, and season tickets are available at nashersculpturecenter.org. You can also call for information. The number is 214-242-5100. My guest today is Seth Knopp. He's artistic director of the concerts. Seth, it's, it's so interesting about how this last program came together. Can you explain the process for me? Uh, well, this was uh, actually a, a real experiment. Um, uh, I think the, pr- the process was one in which everybody learned quite a, a, a great deal. The, it began with the, the four young poets uh, receiving recordings uh, of the music that we were going to be using in that program. So pieces of Janacek, Mahler... Uh, and they received this music that they'd never heard before uh, and used that as a jumping-off point to inspire uh, the music that they wrote. So what you just heard was Mike uh, making many musical allusions in his slam poem, uh, things that, that he felt while listening uh, to the microludes. This is an art spotlight on soundings, new music at the Nasher. The series starts up again on Wednesday, November 12th, and season tickets are now available, and they start at $65. My guest, Seth Knopp, is the artistic director of Soundings. Seth, it's so good that this first concert will feature the talents of cellist Elisa Weilerstein in music by Bach, Kodai, Britton, and Golihoff. Yes, well, I'm very, very thrilled that, that uh, Ali can start the the season off for us uh, at the Nasher. Um we're also going to be working in uh, collaboration uh, with the Dallas International Music and Arts Festival. Um, I think it's called Saluna, um, uh, presenting something that that is also of of interest uh, to them and the theme that they're bringing to their festival this year. And it it juxtaposes uh, two great works of uh, the early. 20th century Arnold, Arnold Schoenberg's Pierre Lunaire. Well, our program is called uh, Music on the Brink of War. Uh, in between, we have two concerts, uh, both very different. Um, uh, one uh, features the work and the playing of wonderful Australian composer Brett Dean, uh, who for many years served as a violist in the Berlin Philharmonic. So incredibly accomplished in more ways than one. And uh, he's written a new string quartet called And Once I Played Ophelia. It's his take on the character of Ophelia, of course, in, in Shakespeare's Hamlet. And that's being paired with uh, Schoenberg's second string quartet along with other works of Brett's. And in April, uh, we heard the Parker String Quartet play that very short excerpt from Cortag's Microludes, and they'll be back to play uh, for one of the only times, a microtonal piece by composer James Wood, uh, written for percussion and string quartet, and realized, in this case, by the Parkers and percussionist Ian Rosenbaum, who's also coming back for his second visit to the Nasher. Well, Seth, another fascinating program in a previous Soundings program, New Music at the Nasher, had to do with of Meeting of the Minds between E.E. E. Cummings and Charles Ives. Tell me about that, please. Yes, well, this was a very fun evening, uh, both halves uh, being so different one from the other. And yet these two uh, mavericks, E.E. E. Cummings and Charles Ives, uh, although uh, being born in the same area of the country, uh, living very different lives after that, but had they had never really met, nor is there any, any known correspondence between them or about one another. What you'll hear is uh, uh, E. Cummings, who almost sang his poetry when he recited it, and then it goes seamlessly into Carla um, and her own take on that poem. Uh, and then you'll hear Gil Kalish playing uh, some of the third movement of the Concord Sonata Vives. So shy, 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 and with a look the very boldest man can scarcely dare to meet, no matter how he'll try to try. So wrong, 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 and with
with a smile at which the rightest man remembers there is such a thing as spring and wonders why. So gay, 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 and with a wisdom not the wisest man will partly understand, although the wisest man am I. So young, 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 and with a something makes the oldest man, whoever he may be, the only man who will never die. The pianist Gilbert Kalish in music from the Concord Piano Sonata by Charles Ives. Kalish was a performer in a past program of Soundings, New Music at the Nasher, and Seth Knopf, the music series artistic director, is with me today. Seth, I want, I want to talk to you about one other past concert in which lights and percussion come together in music by Grisey. 
This piece is called Le Noir des Etoiles. Seth, uh, how did this come off at the Nasher? Well, uh, I think every time this specific piece uh, is done, it probably sounds uh, quite different, very much influenced by its acoustics. Since you have six uh, huge percussion setups and a lot of banging, also a lot of delicate sounds. And in this case, the audience was in the middle, and you had this uh, just incredible effect where the audience was actually lying on their backs and could see in the in the glorious uh, mirrored ceiling of that gallery or reflective uh, ceiling of that gallery, um, the lights from the the percussion uh, stands and the percussionists themselves reflected up in the ceiling. And they could sort of get lost, almost as if they were sleeping under the stars. So, a good stretch now of this work by Grisey, best described, I think, as a study in rhythm. There's no conventional melodic content here. Electronic pulse effects are matched in this piece with the precise work of a group of percussionists, and the recording comes from the actual performance of the Nasher. The work is called Le Noir des Etoiles.
From a concert at the Nasher Sculpture Center in the Dallas Arts District, this music for electronics and percussion, a work by the composer Grisset, Le Noir de Toile. The Nasher definitely is a terrific venue for the artworks and for the music. Seth, I want to remind the listeners that Soundings, new music at the Nasher, resumes Wednesday, November 12th. A recital of cello music with the acclaimed Elisa Weilerstein. Season tickets are now available, and they start at $65. You can buy them at nashersculpturecenter.org, or you can call 214-242-5100. Seth, is there a chance that you'll be visiting these concerts? I will be there for for every single concert and for part of the, the workings uh, leading up to them. I can't wait to be there. Fantastic, Seth. I look forward to meeting you, and thanks for sharing some time with us today about the fascinating series. It's my pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. That'll do it for this Art Spotlight. My name is Kevin Fitcher. Thanks for listening.